YouTube, how you guys doing, man? It's your boy Exclamation Thoughts here again with another video. As usual, as you guys into the room, I'm gonna go ahead and shout you guys out. And um, turn this camera around. And um, what I'm going to do pretty much is tell you guys how I've been handling um, the cheap freight that's been going on over the last couple couple of weeks, really. Uh, I see a lot of people uploading videos complaining about the cheap rates. Um, at this time of the year, rates get cheap anyway. Like every year, it's like the same thing. So I don't know what's a big like. They act like it's something new that's going on in trucking. Yeah, the rates are a little bit cheaper, but this type of time of the year, it, it gets cheap anyway. So I don't know what's a big fuss about. But um, let's see who's in here. What's up, Sammy? Um, what's up, Chio? Um, so pretty much, um, what I end up saying, I was at home for like five days. Um, the reason why I was home for five days, um, I was planning to go home for my wife's birthday. Um, I got home. What's up, B Smooth? What's up, um, Lou the Kid? What's up, Unbreakable Glass? Um, it was my wife's birthday, so um, I was trying to get home. I ended up sitting for a couple of days, and um, I think I uploaded a video telling you guys I purchased, I made a purchase for the trailer. I ended up sitting for a couple of days, and I ended up taking two loads um, that was pretty, you know, pretty crappy. But my my cost for operation is not crazy. So even when I did those two loads, uh, I think I only grossed like I think it was only twenty nine hundred. Um, after everything, I still took home like two bands anyway, you know, even though I only did 2,900, you know, because my fuel bill wasn't crazy because I didn't run that much. And um, that week, I didn't have to pay a lot of insurance or anything like that because um, it was paid up already. So, and then plus I made a payment on the trailer, so I didn't have a trailer payment. So I, I was able to take home a substantial amount of money, given that I didn't run that much. So what happened was when I got home, um, I was planning on to stay home for two days. What's up, Luda Kid? Um, planning on to stay home for two days and um the rates were just ridiculous it was like real cheap and as you guys know i live in georgia and the rates are normally cheap anyway um this time of the year because of alabama and because of florida um so everything was cheap i tried to get some loads you no know, pain you no know, just decent just decent enough for me to leave the house um but i couldn't find nothing that was pain or going where i wanted to go so um since i ran through the holidays i I'd made up a lot of money through the holidays um, I just decided to just stay home a couple of days, and that's pretty much what I did. Um, the way I handle this time of the year, when it's um, the rates get real crappy, I just I just scale back a little bit. I don't run too hard. I don't go too crazy. I don't run all over the place trying to get the money. I pretty much just run just to pace myself to make sure everything is paid up, and I put some money in my pocket. But I don't try to go too crazy. I don't try to run too much miles unless the load paid. If the load pays. Then um then I, then I'll run it, but I don't really try to go crazy and start chasing chasing loads and chasing miles and chasing money, but this time of the year because things naturally slow down. I do change up the way I run a little bit. Um, normally I like you guys know I run like the Midwest and I will come back down south. Um, I'll change up and I'll go to Texas this time of the year because as you guys know I run a reefer and a lot of decent paying loads sometimes come out of McAllen, sometimes Laredo to come back east. So I'll run Texas and I even go out to like like what I'm doing now on my next load, I'm going to Nebraska and from Nebraska I'm gonna shoot back down to Texas. So I change up how I run but I still can make you can still make money in the when it, even when it's slow like this. You just gotta have not have a um, a high cost of um operation. You just can't just be chasing the money. And sometimes you just gotta say no. You don't have to take the cheap freight. Um, like for example, um, I was trying to get to the house for the holidays. Uh, not for the holidays, for my wife's birthday. I couldn't find a load on the load board. I was pay, paying decent. Um, I posted my truck. Um, I got one call on my truck. Um, that was the guy wanted the load that was going to Atlanta, and it actually works out perfectly for me because it didn't deliver the next day. It delivered the following day, which was fine because the next day was my wife's birthday. And um, I told a guy 14. I told a guy I could do the load for 15. He said he couldn't do 15. He could do 11. I said the cheapest I want I'd be able to do it for is 1450. You know, he said, hold on, let me check with my manager. That, that nonsense the brokers like to do. He came back. He said, hey, I could do it for 1400. I already knew if he went from 11 to 14, I got him. So I said, nah, 15 would be the, the lowest I could do it for. It's negative 10. I'm holding it for two days. Make you know, make up some bunch of excuses, right? So he said, okay, I could do it for the 14.50. So I was able to get three dollars a mile. Now it was, it was more like 250, 250, 275, or something like that, um, to get back to the house. So you could get good money in this market. You're just gonna have to just pace yourself. Um, don't bite anything that comes your way, you know, and don't get into a panic. And, you know, don't get me wrong. If you got things you got to pay and you need to do what you got to do, do what you got to do. But um, that's why I personally didn't get an expensive truck and I purposely didn't try to get new equipment or anything like that. 
I don't really have to move my truck if I don't absolutely want to move my truck. So I could just, I could wait a day or wait a two days or whatever. I can still run like, you know, gross 3,500, 4,500 and still take home three bands if I don't go crazy on my fuel. So, but yeah, but that's pretty much how I handle the slow market. It gets slow every year. This year is a little bit slower, but the Christmas season and the Thanksgiving season and the Halloween season for reefer for me what to me was a little bit slower than the year before but you can't predict every year is going to be the same and this and the way I look at it is that it's just a correction um I was looking at the dat report today they said that's a um an increase in um truck trucks out on the road what this is going to do with the race being as cheap as cheap as it, it is now a lot of people are probably not going to make it through the winter people going to have to turn in their truck and then the strong is gonna still be out here, and then the race gonna go, go back up, and then we, who has a the people who actually have like a, now I wouldn't say a decent ben, um, business plan, but who are running efficiently, um, would be able to reap the benefits of those who, um, didn't you know I had I had a high cost of operation, I had to, you know couldn't you know couldn't make it through the, the slow period. So yeah, but that's pretty much how I do it, man. I just slow down a little bit, I don't go crazy running here running here running here running there for like a dollar thirty dollar fifty a mile i won't put a dollar fifty load in my truck even though i could run for a dollar fifty and still make money but i i would never run for i would never put a load for a dollar fifty in my truck just on principle unless it's an emergency and i need to get home and it just makes sense i rather sometimes i rather deadhead and you guys know i've told you i've deadhead before then um then take a cheap cheap frick i just feel like on principle it's not worth me in a reefer. In a drive in, it'd be something different, but in a reefer, to me, it's not it's not really worth it. But I don't go crazy. I scale back a little bit. Um, I be um, very particular in where I do where I place my truck, and um, I just run pretty much just to maintain. I don't run just like try to take the bank. I just run just enough to pay everything off, put my money in my pocket, and then uh, put a little bit away for maintenance, and that's pretty much it. But yeah, let's see what you guys been saying. Um, yeah, you see here, I'm getting in this, I'm getting it in the snow on the short hauls. Oh yeah, see, um, Beast Moon, I saw, I was in, um, I know you was in Michigan. I watched your last video the last time you said you was in Michigan. Um, I just hit Michigan today, but I saw the lows going out to Pennsylvania, paying real good money. But I opted to take my chances and do what everybody else is probably not going to do and go west because the money was so good, it only made sense to, for me to drive into Pennsylvania. I seen low paying 18, 19. 500 600 miles it made sense to do it but i said you know what i'm not going to do what everybody else is going to do i'm going to shoot west and then um i'm going to head to nebraska and i've i've been checking ahead to see what the loads are paying in nebraska and then uh if i could get this load off my truck which i'm at a costco i never had to wait this long at a costco but i'm at a costco now if i could get this load off my truck and um pick up my and deliver my next load when i want to um i should have i could have a very very good week it probably will be my second best week of um last between you know within the last 12 months it could be my second best week if i could just hit it right but it all depending on them getting this load off my truck and me um picking up my next load which is only 12 miles away and actually running it because i have a long i have like almost um not 890 miles i gotta run and i want i want to try to be there by tomorrow afternoon so we see how it goes but yeah um i know pennsylvania is paying right now because i saw it on the low board but i just don't want to deal with the snow and all of that let me see here um, you see here, what's up, JB? You see here, Unbreakable. I, I shouted you out already. I shouted you out already. E.E. E. Watkins. In my opinion, the money is in the short hauls. You just got to bump more dock. Yeah, you can make more money in the short hauls. You definitely could. Um, yeah, you definitely could. With the reefer, I think you could still branch out, but it's just certain places you got to go, and you got to be there on a certain period of times, you know? You got to try to catch wherever they have a season, a produce season, you're just going to have to try to be there. And wherever a lot of the reefer guys don't like to go, you're just gonna have to go to those places. A lot of the places are very, 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 very cold. We don't want to go up there, you know. And um, you're just gonna have to do what you got to do. Um, and just be willing to say no. You be willing to, you know, if you, you know, if you're not willing to, if you can't find something long, then take something short. You know, if you can't find something short, pay something decent, pay something long. You just gotta be open to do things you don't normally do and just change up a little bit. But you can still make money because last year I made I made just as much money in the winter months than I did. In the, in, the, in the summer months so um with the exception of when i had to change dispatchers and it it, it, shake, it shake me up a little bit but, but now i'm back in my groove so i i make the same money so yeah you can still make money in the slow market you just gotta have to just you know change things up a little bit the, the people who's gonna struggle are the people who have a, a high cost of operation they need a lot of money 
in order to take that for him. But yeah, you need a lot of money to sustain your business. If you have a, a four thousand dollar truck note and a fifteen hundred dollar trailer payment, you may you may struggle a little bit, you know. But um, you can still make money in this market. You're just gonna have to do things you don't want to do and just change up a little bit, you know. What you think about a two thousand and three Columbia? I like Columbias. I I can't say specifically about the years, but if I had to get an older truck, the older truck would be a Columbia, or it would be a um a FL, or it would be a uh, one of those internationals. I can't remember the brand of them. Them old square international with the little windows all around top of the condo, be one of those. But yeah, you can make money with a Columbia. Columbia uh, uh decent, but it's not really the truck. It's the motor. What motor does it have? Yeah, the mo let me see here. Container work in the shot is slow as well. Yeah, the container work is going to be slow because a lot of those stuff on containers, they come from China. So normally it picks China, you know, that's where we get all our washing machines, TVs, all our electronics and all that other stuff. It comes from overseas and from Asia. So a lot of that stuff comes through Cali, get makes its way on the rail and then gradually start working its way east. So after the holidays, I was I would figure um container work would slow down a lot because you know, we don't need as much iPhones now as we did before Christmas. You know, the the only uh, market that I think you should be able to still do decent, really, and it, it, it's reefer because people are going to eat just as much in January as they do in March, as they do in um, January. You're going to eat what you're going to eat. Thanksgiving picks up a little bit in the holidays because people eat a little bit more. But with a reefer, you can still do good. Like right now, the load that I'm on right now, it, it pays $2.40 a mile. I know that's low for Be Smooth, but for me... You know, for me to get out of here and just keep my truck rolling to get somewhere where I'm going to make more money, um, it wasn't a bad rate, especially for me going east, not going uh, not going east, but going west. It's not a bad rate for me. So, and um, and it's a, I could deliver it next day. No, so if I could get the if I could get the on time, these people get the stuff off my truck. But yeah, but um, but yeah, but I was figured um, um, container work, and that's one of the reasons why when I had the driver and I wanted to get back to the reefer, because the reefer is a little bit more recession proof than a driver, man. Because you know, no matter what, the baby gonna need milk, and you know, and mom gonna need her eggs and cheese and stuff like that. So people gonna have to eat regardless. So um, with the reefer, is a little bit more recession proof. Now, don't get me wrong, I've noticed um, the rates being lower than it normally is. Um, but I still, like I said, my cost of operation is not crazy. You know, I could run at a dollar fifty and still take home uh, money as long as I hit twenty five hundred miles. But you know, I don't like to run that cheap. You know, because I just figure something else is going to happen and then it'll cost me money and then I'm gonna. And normally the cheaper load that I do, if I do a cheap load, it has more headaches a lot of the time. The people who pay money, believe it or not, a lot of time we're moving smooth. But them cheap loads, those are the ones that they want to keep you in a the dock they want to make you real heavy and then they want to load you all types of crazy so that's one of the reasons why i don't like to do those cheaper runs anyway too yeah but um let's see here um uh, what do you consider a low cost of operation and all of, it all depends on you and your revenue for me low cost would be you know your truck payment like you know 300 you know 300 350 400 dollars a week max um trailer payment 200 dollars or something like that um, it all depends because it all, it all, it all depends. But for me, if you could run and make money at a, a dollar 30, you could do okay. You know, but if you need, I'd like, say a dollar 75, a dollar 80, $2 a mile, just for you to just pay bills. Yeah. You're going to be in trouble because this market is not really the market for that. You know, you know, it's like, for example, I came out of Georgia for a dollar 87 came coming out of georgia you know so you know it, normally i try to stay at 250 on average on all miles sometimes i do more than that sometimes i do three dollars 325 sometimes i do 220 it all depends but um yeah if you if you need two dollars a mile just for op, just to operate yeah you're gonna be in a little bit of trouble in this market because sometimes you ain't gonna be able to get that you know but if you have an operation and you um you can run like i'm talking about with your salary because some people in when they tally up all the expenses they don't include a salary i'm talking about what paying yourself as well as um your fixed expenses and your variable expenses like your truck note and fuel and all this etc if you could do everything and be at a dollar forty a dollar thirty dollar forty five dollar fifty you could do okay in this market you should and, and and this is me talking from a reefer standpoint you know not really driving you could do good in this market you know you still could do okay but i always try to get the most amount most amount of money that i can get you know and then um it 
you know, posting your truck helps too. Cause you know, when somebody call your phone, you already know that they 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 actually they need you more than you um you need them. Sometimes you both need each other, but when they calling you for um because they need your truck, they need you a lot more. So you could probably get you know get the rate you want to get. Let me see here. How's the truck? The truck is doing good. Um, ever since I um I uploaded that last video, I told you I changed the holes. I didn't have much issues. I did before I come back out. Like for example, um. I came back out on Monday, so Sunday I went to the truck, I turned on the truck, I let the truck idle for like an hour, not an hour, but like half an hour, 45 minutes, and I pretty much pre-tripped the truck. I found that um, I had a flat tire on my trailer, and I had um, a coolant leak, but the coolant leak was one of the, the hose clamp was loose, so I had to tighten up the, the hose clamp, I put some coolant in it, and um, I checked it last night and everything was good. And um, I did a um, the tire, pretty much the valve stem, is um is what's letting the air out the tire itself doesn't have a flat it's just a stem that's bad so what i did i, I didn't replace the stem yet i i aired it up and then i was able to put the little tool let me see if i can find it here one of these things here these to remove that stem i put it in there and was able to pull out the valve stem to stop it from leaking air and then i just put a I just put a cap on it and that seemed to hold the air and that's fine but otherwise man i haven't had much issues um much issues with the truck the truck is running pretty strong i got like seven hundred and five thousand miles on it now so but it's running pretty good you know let's see here um jb i would say less than 60 cents per mile or cost of operation you can survive okay there you go 60 cents a mile you know 60 cents a mile i'm sure see mines will be higher than 60 cents a mile because you know, I don't get the greatest um, MPG for my truck. I get like six miles to the gallon. I know those guys getting eight. I heard some guys say they're getting nine and change. You know, I get like six miles to the gallon. So if you include that, include my truck note, and then you also include maintenance and you include the insurance and stuff like that, tags and all that stuff. Mine's is more than 60 cents per mile, plus my salary, my, you know, paying myself. You know, mine's a little bit more than um, 60 cents per mile. You know, I see here. Uh, my cost is very low, but I would deadhead if the area ain't, isn't paying two fifty a mile. See, there you go. See, Watkins said he would deadhead if it ain't paying two fifty a mile, and I agree with you. Um, sometimes I will take the take the low because, like I said, coming out of the house, um, it, it was only paying um a dollar eighty three to the truck. I still took it because. I can still make money with that, and it's going to pay for me to get to Michigan. And the load picked up first thing in the morning, and I could deliver it next day. I was supposed to be – it's supposed to be off my truck now, and I still got a green light. I don't know what's going on. So I take it. But, yeah, sometimes I rather – if I know I could get to a better area, that's the load is going to pay, pay better, I would deadhead than taking the cheap freight and having the freight tie, me, tie up my truck, especially if it's going into the weekend because I don't want to um, run the risk of not making money. But nobody wants to call me, but not everybody's calling me. But – um. But yeah, but um, yeah. Sometimes I just um, I have to take the load. Like when I was sitting, when I was in Kentucky, and I didn't check the weather, and everybody was taking all the loads. I sat that day because I didn't want to take anything cheap, and everything that was leaving was cheap. Then I realized it was a blizzard coming, so I took a load the next day. I had to drive in the snow for just a little bit, so I had to go get the load. I drove in the snow, and then I deadhead. I not deadhead, but I drove right up out of there, so I didn't have to drive in the snow anymore. But um, yeah. Sometimes it's better to deadhead, and sometimes it's better to just just take the load. It all depends. I still averaging three dollars a mile or better, but my gross is down. I'm not killing my truck for lows, um, for lows lane 2400 that we're paying 3600 exactly. And that's the same thing with me. I'm not gonna go out of my way to, to pull some cheap freight now. If I can still make money on the load. As long as it gets me to the number I need in order for me to be good, I still take the load. Because um, unlike Beast Moon, my truck isn't paid off. I still got a note on my truck. Trailer's paid off now, but I still got a note on my truck. But um, my note is fifteen eighty eight. you know, so it's like three and change or something like that. Three and change, four and change or something like that per week, you know, if, if you look at it as a weekly standpoint. So it's not, it's not too bad. It's got people out here that got higher truck notes. But um, I'm not going to kill myself. I'm just going to run and just do what I need to do in order to make the money I need to make. And then if that means me only grossing three grand, okay, I'll gross three grand. It may not work out for the carrier where I'm at because I know they want you to stay at a certain point. But I'm not going to run my truck at a dollar forty a mile, dollar fifty a mile to get to that point. It's not happening because I feel like I'll be doing more harm than good. I got an older truck, got more miles more maintenance it's not really worth my time i'd rather just run enough like i said i'd gross 29 and still took home you know two bands because 
my fuel bill was like real low and I ain't have no insurance and I paid off the trailer. So I still was able to make good money. You know, two band was more than enough. I needed to take care of my expenses. So, but yeah, but I'm not going to kill myself or uh, run my truck into the ground just so I can hit, you know, the gross I want to, I want to hit by running a whole bunch of miles. To me, it doesn't make sense. I'm not going to change the miles. I want to make the most amount of money I can and not kill my truck. And if the rates are not where it needs to be, I'm just going to do what I need to do in order to just take, take in the money. You know, just taking enough money to just pay my expenses, you know, to operate my truck and my business and put some money in my pocket. So, yeah. What's your um, average uh, fuel cost per week? Normally, if I run like I normally run, my average fuel cost is anywhere between 1200 and 1500 a week. But I, I run a reefer and I don't get the greatest fuel mileage. So normally it's between twelve and 1500 Some weeks, though, I have a $600 fuel bill. Some weeks I have. $800 fuel bill. If I really run, if I, like I say, in the summertime when I'm running and I'm going here and I'm going there, I may have a fuel bill of $2,400, $2,300. But normally, normally it's like anywhere from 12 to 15 normally. Uh, hey, Doodoo Brown has entered the building. I don't, I don't know who Doodoo Brown is, bro. Oh, oh what's, hey, what's up, Chucker Brown? Chucker Brown? Um, I'm an owner operator. I'm seriously thinking of getting my own authority. Is it really paid well? I don't have my own authority. It all depends on you. I think if you could get with a carrier that paying you 90%, it's the same thing. You're going to get the same thing. Cause you say that you got your, um, you're getting hundred percent of the load. You're going to pay 3% for a factoring company. And then you're going to have to deal with the back offices and, and things like that. It might, you know, yeah, you may make a little bit more money, but it may not be worth it because you have to allocate your time to do other things. Now, I do want to get my own authority, but it's not because I think I'd be making more money because I think I might be making less. I think I'm, um, I want to get my own authority because I want more control. I don't want nobody calling my phone about anything. I want to have all the control, you know? So that's the reason why I want to get my authority. But if you could get with a company that's paying you like 90%, 88%, in some cases you might be making more money um, under um, lease on than you actually make with your own authority. Not all the time, not all the time, but in some cases. So, But yeah, the reason why I want to get my authority is not because I want to make more money, because um, I think I make decent money now, at the, even at the at 90%. It's because I want more control, and I don't want nobody calling my phone for anything. So, yeah. Stop hauling cheap freight, and real owner, oper real owner operators don't haul cheap freight. Yeah. If you got to haul it, haul it, if you need to. But I personally, I don't like doing it because it's a headache. It's a headache, and then I know my worth, and I try to be at my worth all the time. You know, the more, the better, you know. I can't be like be smooth and get these five dollars a mile loads all the time, you know. But I don't like to haul cheap freight because I feel like, you know, everybody else get paid by the hour, you know, mechanics. Um, uh, if you take your, if you call, if I gotta call a reefer guy out, he get paid by the hour. The lumper he gets paid by the hour. The guy at the fuel station get paid by the hour. So I want to make sure I get, you know, I get paid for my time. You know, I don't feel like taking some loads a dollar fifty a mile. And when I got all this expensive fuel, the reefer and all this other stuff, I just don't think it's worth it sometimes. So I just prefer to try to, you know, I know my worth. I try to get the, the best paying load I could get from that area. And then um, a lot of times I'm, I'm able to hit that. I be able to hit get what I want. Even when everybody's complaining, oh, I can't get this, I can't get that, I get it. Because sometimes you'd be surprised. If you, if you put in an offer on a load and they say, oh, I can't do that, and then you just talk some smack, say, hey, man, the area where this load is going, there's no loads coming out of that area. Um, I got three options working on right now, and my truck is empty right now, and I'm ready to go. You'd be surprised. They will, they will just say no, and then they'll turn around and say, give me a second, and they'll come back, and they give you the money. Sometimes people don't realize that you just got to say no and put your foot down to haul a cheap freight. If you if they're going to throw cheap freight at you and tell you that's what the best you can do, and you're going to take it, they're going to give it to you all day. But if you put you, you know, put your foot down and say, nah, I can't haul. I can't haul this load. It's too cheap or whatever the case is. You know, you'd be surprised to get more money. Like when I call on the load to leave the house, I told the guy, I was like, this load is already cheap. The, the offer that I'm giving to you is already cheap. I said the area where I'm going to, which was a lie, because I already checked the area. I said, um, the area where I'm going, there's no freight coming out of that area. My truck is empty right now, and I'm ready to go, and we already set up, you know? He said, give me a second. Let me check with my manager. He hung up the phone, and then I didn't even get to look at another load. My phone rang, and he said, hey, man, we could do it. You know, it wasn't the best paying load, but it was the best paying load at the time coming out of my area. 
So, um, you know, I got the money that I needed to get in order for me to feel good about running the low. So you could do you could do good. Sometimes you just got to put your foot down and, you know, and just have some standards. Uh, on the eye, where I'm truly, where I am, I truly get to pick where I want to go. They don't really call or bother. They can tell what they what they have. I pick where I want where I go, and I do not. I do like that part of the company, but I'm not. I'm not. I'm looking to make more money. Okay, excuse me if I'm reading all fucked up. But um, then you you know if you're looking to make more money, you're not necessarily gonna make no money. It's more money, especially in the beginning. If you're getting a good percentage of where you're at, you may not make more money in the beginning because a lot of brokers are not gonna mess with you in the beginning. Some most many will, but not all of them are gonna mess with you in the beginning. And then you're gonna have top a lot more of your time doing more administrative things. Um, like doing, you know, if the, even though, if they don't take much to do doing carrier package, even though that don't take much to do, but just getting the whole, you getting, getting things going and getting your bearings, you may spend more time doing that than actually negotiating and, um, and, um, um, uh, making more money. You know, that's just my personal opinion. I don't think when I get my own authority or activate my authority, I don't think I'm going to make more money in the beginning, but I think eventually I will. Eventually I will, but in the beginning I don't I don't anticipate that. But at the same time, you'll get more control and you'll have nobody, you know, you could you could grow when you want to grow because it's your authority. You could do whatever you need to do. It's your authority. You know, and that's what I want. I want more or less control than I actually want the money. I can make less money if I have more control. It it, it gives it may give me the the sense of more freedom and that's what I want you know, over the money. But um you may not make more money. There's guys out here that probably doing making 75 percent at the carry they at and probably make more money than some of these owner operators out here taking cheap freight you know because they're negotiating better they already got contacts so even at 75 percent they can still make more money but so getting your authority i don't think it's going to guarantee you more money especially in the short run but hey um i want to get mines even though i feel like i do, do i do good at the carry where i'm at i do want to get my own numbers they finally started loading me Finally saw a load of me. I only got five pallets on here. Oh, that's another thing. This load I took up here was only 5,000 pounds. Let me see if I can show. I don't want to show you. It may have too much information on uh, that, that bill of lading. But it was only 5,000 pounds. So, but yeah. So if you're going to, if it's in a bad market, try to try to be as light as you can. You know, you could do it. Um, You see here. So I only got five pallets on here. So hopefully they, they get this stuff off quick so I can get my next load. Because I'm really trying to get to the back um, this week. And if everything goes good. Like I said, I could have my best week that I had, my second best week the whole year. Um, I'm about to change carriers. That's based out of Chicago. I'll let you know who who it does. I prefer a mix of contract freight and lower boys. Okay. Okay, let me know how it goes, man. Let me know how it goes. But be smooth, man. In my personal opinion, at your point, man, I don't think no carrier you'll be, you, you'll be with, you're going to be 100% happy unless you get your own numbers, man. And if you got a paid-off truck, I don't know if your trailer paid off, man. You might you might as well just go ahead and give it a shot. At least activate the mug and then let it sit till till um spring. Cause I think you in your position that you should be able to make that transition, no problem. You know. Hey, what's up, Chuck? Owner operator. Yep, I'm out of Jacks, Jacksonville, Florida. I take freight to uh, McDonough GA every day. Okay. Yeah, I like going to Jacksonville. That the furthest south I've been with my truck, um, um delivering a load is Orlando. And I did go south to, I forgot the name of the town, um, to pick up a load um, during produce season. And then that's the only reason I did that, because it was produce season. But normally, I don't take loads down to, like, Miami. I don't go down to, um, not Orlando, what's the other place down there? Um, I forgot the other place down in, um, down in Texas, uh, Fort Lauderdale. I don't go down there, because the money I want to go down there, most of these brokers won't pay. So I don't ever go down there. Not to say that I won't. If they pay what I want, I'll go down there, but... I'm scared to even tell you guys what I want to go down there because the way I, I the way I factor in going down there, I factor a thousand dollars for every day that I got the load. Then I factor in another thousand dollars to come back up out of there. Then I factor in um, every stop. So if it's three stops, I'm, I'm five hundred dollars per stop. That's the way I think about it when I'm going down there. But I can't. I haven't found a broker that's willing to give me the money to go down there, so I don't. I don't go down there. But I go to Jacksonville, and the only reason why I like to go to Jacksonville. Is because um my sister lives down there, so I get to go down there, chill, and then um come back up. But yeah, but that lane from Jacksonville to McDonough, um if you got a backhaul out of Jacksonville, you could do that all day. You know, you could do that all day. Um, it pays good to go down from Georgia to um Jacksonville. 
Um, it's not a large difference having your own authority versus getting 90%. The difference is control. I do better than guys with their authority, and as long as the company um, don't bother me, I'm straight. Yeah, see? Yeah. I don't think it's much of a difference, neither, because you're going to have to get a factoring company. Your factoring company, well, you don't have to, but it'd probably be better. It's going to cost you anywhere from 3 maybe 4%. Some people I heard, you know, again, 2.5%. Some people I heard are getting that. But um, not only are you going to do that, and then you're going to spend time filling out the carrier packets. You're going to spend time doing your back office stuff. Back office stuff. You could do it, and it's not that hard, but it's still time, more time you're going to have to spend doing those things. At 90%, Right now, I could just call in the load. They send me the Raycon. I email it, and I'm 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 out of here. I don't got to do it. Even if I do a carrier packet, I email it to them, and then they do it, and I'm out of I'm out of here, you know. Um, but at the same time, and then every load, most of the loads I call on, I don't even have to do a carrier packet. We're they're already in the system. Everything's already done. They'll give me the load on the strength. They'll be like, oh yeah, we do plenty of loads with you guys. Um, we want me to send a Raycon, and then I don't got to spend time doing anything else. But at the same time, this is not my my numbers. That's their numbers, so they got the control. At any given time, I could be axed, and I got to find another carrier to lease on with. I just want the control, you know. I want to grow a, a full business and be able to bring my relatives on and bring my friends on and be able to put people on just on the strength and not having to ask permission. So that's my reason of wanting to have my own numbers. But at the same time, I don't think you're going to necessarily make more money unless you got contacts and you really know what you're doing. You know, especially in the beginning where you're going to be, you know, some broker's not going to mess with you because your numbers are too new. Some brokers rather give the load to established carrier with, a, with a, a, a carrier they have a relationship with. So they may not give you the load. Or you may get the load and then another broker, another um, driver calls on the load that they already set up with. And then they take the load from you and give it to them. I've had that happen before. I called on the load, and the guy was um the guy was like, hey, I already got a guy who said he could run this load for me, but he's at the shipper, he at the receiver right now, and um we're not set up, so he has to do a carrier packet. I gave him my number, he gave me the load for the same money. Well, I think it's the same money. He could be lying, I don't know, but it was money. It was three dollars a mile, so I was good with it. And he gave, and since we was already set up, he gave me the load because we was already set up, and he didn't have to do no, he didn't have to wait for no carrier packing or nothing like that. So, you may not make the, you may not make the same money or more money in the beginning. Eventually, I think you may, you may be able to do it once you got your bearings, you got things going. But I'm not doing, I'm not gonna do it for more money. I'm doing it for more control because I don't want nobody calling my phone. I don't want to have to ask no questions. If I make an executive decision, it's my decision, and I own that decision. I don't got to check with nobody because I'm running under the DOT numbers. That's just me, you know. But, yeah. But you can still make money, least on. You know, you still can make more money. Um, stay deep south as you can handle the weather. Nah, I can handle the weather, but I don't want to. Remember, Beast Moon, I'm from New York. You know, I, I've shoveled snow. I know it's like to shove your car out of the and uh, out of some snow. I just don't want, why why do it when I don't have to? You know what I mean? If I can make the money, avoiding the bad weather, why? You know why why run into the why run into the storm? Because I want to make some money. Because just doing that, not only you have to deal with the weather, and you have to deal with the um you know the issues that may come along with that. You got you exposing your truck to more salt and stuff, man. So while they putting salt on the road and all that slush, that slush is kicking up on your truck and your truck all getting rusty. I just I like to avoid. It. If you look at where I'm at now, my truck is a little bit you know nasty, but it ain't nowhere near nasty as the rest of these guys because my truck. I'm in the south most of the time, you know. I'm not dealing with the nasty. So I'm in Michigan now, but best believe I'm getting my next load. I'm gonna head out to Nebraska from Nebraska. Um, I'm heading straight to Texas, and from Texas, I'm going back to Georgia, and I'm going to stay home for, like, another four days. So we're going to see how it works out because, you know, I still got a red light. So, you know, let me see. I'm going – I'm home this weekend to try to find another trailer and raise my percentage. Wish me luck. Oh, man, I wish you luck, Watkins, man. Do that, man. Get get your trailer. Like, I know I was watching one of um 4 4 trucker video um, yesterday, and he was talking about um guys – that's um that have a, that they're not using their own trailers they're using a the company trailers and they like to the drop and hook i don't miss dropping hook i got my own trailer i don't miss dropping hook at all i would i'd be hard pressed to go back to drop dropping hook one reason because you people don't realize but you're paying for that luxury you're paying for the drop and hook so if, when you're getting 65 percent of the rate or 75 percent or 68 percent of the rate it's because they, you're, they're charging you heavily steeply for that trailer so you're not really benefiting and then a lot of times 
it may take you an hour or two hours to just do a drop and hook depending on the facility that you're at. I don't mind going somewhere and then, you know, them off waiting and offloading me, especially sometimes it takes too long, but most of the time it's not that bad. I don't, like, I, don't, I don't mind that. And the thing I don't mind too is that I know what's going on with this trailer. I hate when I'm, when I had to do the drop on hook, you would run through it, get your paperwork, hook up to the trailer, go do the pre-trip on the trailer. And all of a sudden you got a flat tire. You got a brake drum. That's bad. You got a, a tail light that's out. I don't like that. So, Using the same trailer every day to me is a luxury because I always I always know that my trip my trailer is um is good to go and it's trustworthy. I don't gotta really worry about certain things, even though things do happen from time to time. But I try to do the best to prevent it. So I I don't mind that, especially if you're getting paid you're getting paid more for to not dealing with the drop and hook. Sixty five percent, ninety percent, sixty five percent with their trailer, ninety percent with your own. That's a lot of money, you know. So yeah. Um, be smooth if. Having your own authority was so great, then plenty of folks like Casanova wouldn't let their authority deactivate and lease on with a carrier. You two folks hype it up. I think I think so, too. Sometimes we, we hype it up. But I think getting your authority is a good thing, I think. Because, you know, these major, <clears throat> excuse me, these major fleets then get where they are by continuing to lease on. Leasing on is a good way to get your feet wet in the game. And uh, have somebody else have, um, handle the paperwork for you while you just focus on running your truck. But at some point, I think it's probably in your best interest to just do your own thing, especially if you want to grow. Now, if you don't want to grow and you're content with the way you are and you're having a one truck or two trucks or three trucks and you like leasing on, then fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But like I said, for me, it's not the money. It's more or less the control. I want the control because, as you know, these moves, the more control you have in trucking, the more um, money you're going to make and also the more um, the more things are going to be easier for you. Like, I know guys that go on the road, they stay on the road for like three, four weeks. I go home every other week or every week. You know, like I left the house Monday and I'm already planning on going, being back at the house Monday and I'm going to stay home to about Friday. You know, so I, I go home a lot and I still make I still make decent money, man. And I don't be I don't be killing myself. So. And, that, and a lot of the reason for that is because I have more control because the truck came from me. Now I got the control, complete control over the trailer. I got my own tags and um, I don't need to really run crazy to make money. So, yeah, let's see here. Uh, uh, I, let me see. I'm going to try to go back. I'm missing some food for thought. Be smooth. Let me see here. Um, that's right. In the sun and 70 degree weather all day. Yeah, exactly. I don't got to go. I don't got to go in the snow. I don't want to do all of that, man. I remember I was, talk I was on the phone with one of my subscribers. We was going down the road talking. And then I hear him say, oh, shit. I was like, what happened? He was like, yo, some, some truck just turned over because it, it's, uh, it lost control in the ice and all of that. I was like, man, I don't want to hear with all that crap. He, you could do everything right in the snow. Everything right. And somebody else could come and, and hit you and, and, and just mess up your day or just tear up your truck. Why well, I want to go through all of that when I can make the same money just running against the weather you know if i could catch the weather i'll run against it sometimes i'll uh, miss it because i don't be paying attention like that sometimes on the weather like like, like two weeks ago a week ago when i was in kentucky i was not listening to the um the weather because i took my radio out because i'm trying to put in this new radio i ain't gonna do it though because the harness is different and i don't want to cut no wires because i don't know these wires are not labeled i don't know what is what so i'm not gonna try to do it i'm gonna get a professional to do it that knows what he's doing but um yeah, I run against the weather all the time. I got no shame in my game. Yeah, it's going to be snowing a little bit in Nebraska, but it's not going to be like PA where they're shutting down the roads. And by the time I get my load, you know, Friday, I anticipate being in Texas Friday. So I should be good. Let me see here. Um, Brokers will be a third or fourth option. I got my authority for one main reason, to bypass all the brokers, all the middlemen, and purchase freight, cars, and trucks to purchase, to wholesale, and sell retail to the public. Brokers will be, yeah, man, that, that's and that's a good because you're, you're going to have more control. And then you can skip the middlemen. The more middlemen you cut out in this business, the more money you're going to make. The more people that got to touch your money before you get it, um, the less money you're going to make. So if you cut out the middlemen, you'll make more money. The thing with me and wanting to get my own um, shippers and all of that, is that just sometimes you the um you got to be dedicated to that shipper, you know? I may wake up one day and be like, the hell with this. I don't want to run a load. And if I'm pulling broker freight, I just don't call on a load that day. But if you have a shipper, you're obligated to run that freight, you know, unless you got a shipper that just shoot out like an email blast of different um freight options and you just pick off that. 
But um, a lot of these brokers, they have an obligation to move that freight. And if they don't move that freight, they lose that contract. And that's one of the reasons why, well, one truck and it's only me, I wouldn't want that. Because some days I don't feel like running. Like I went home, I planned on staying home for two days when I went home. I ended up staying home for like five days. So if I had brokered freight, I mean, um, direct contracted freight, I would have to go run that freight. And I didn't have to because I'm pulling the broker freight. But then again, um, if you're pulling direct shipper freight, you're making more money. So, um, you see here, 20 degrees in New York. Okay, 20 degrees is not bad. Last night, what it was? Last night was, when I went to bed, it was negative six. So, I didn't turn off the truck. So, I let the truck run. Like, right now, I got the truck resting right now because it's like 15, 20 degrees. And the truck is a little bit warm. So, I'm letting it rest right now. But, um, yeah, last night was like six degrees. They need to hurry up, man. I'm waiting for this thing to go off so I can get up out of here. I'm trying to get this low before one. I don't even know what time is it. Let me see, 65 degrees in Florida. Yeah, that's nice, man. Um, Lou the kid, lucky you. Um, be smooth. I just left uh, three negative three in Signa, Signa, Michigan last night. Was cold. Wasn't cold as wasn't as cold to me due to no wind. Okay. Yeah, it was negative six where I was. I, w I shut down in Ohio last night. It was so much ice on the ground. When I went to go park, I couldn't see the line. So I went out there with a little hammer and I, I chiseled so I could see the white line because when I parked, I didn't want nobody knocking on my door telling me to move up, move back or nothing like that. So I went out there with a little hammer. I chiseled so I could see the white line and I lined myself up. But when I went to bed, it was negative six, and when I woke up, it was six degrees, so I didn't turn off my truck because, like I said in one of my videos previously, the last time I turned my truck off in below, below zero weather, I woke up with all types of problems. Even with that fuel treatment in there, I had all types of problems. So I don't I don't turn off my truck no more when it's that cold. Anything below freezing, really, I ain't, I ain't turning off my truck. I, let, I just let it go ahead and idle, but when I idle it, I idle it at 900 to 1,000 RPMs. I don't idle it at 500 RPMs. Um, you guys know why already, because I explained that. Let me see here. Anyone try getting on Amazon? Nah, I never tried getting on Amazon. Since I've been out here, I only hauled for Amazon twice. Um, both times it was in Georgia, and it was it, it, the low pay, decent, and it wasn't bad because it, once I went in, they let me in, and they, they I dropped the trailer in the door. I went to sleep. They were like, we come get you when it's done. They knocked on my door like an hour and a half later, and I took my trailer, and I bounced, so... Well, I never try to get Amazon um, freight directly. Um, be smooth. We need that uh, Baccarat how-to book. Yeah. <laughs> I would go with Amazon if I had my authority. I'm still, I'm, it's it, it signing under a carrier who take a good chunk of the pay. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. That's, all right. Be smooth. No book. William Parker. Uh, just watch YouTube and, and you have pro t-shirt. Okay. I got to run. Be safe. All right, E. Watkins. Be safe, man. I don't gamble as much because I need to get my numbers up in my trucking business for future capital. I got you. I, I don't gamble that much. Every once in a blue, once in a blue, I, I may get a lottery ticket or something like that, but I don't I don't gamble pretty much. I don't gamble. I'm too cheap. <laughs> I'm too cheap to gamble, you know, but, um, but yeah, man. But if you're good at it, you're good at it. Cause I see Beast Move sometimes be showing up that showing that money that um um that um <laughs> he look way more than trucking money. Hey, Beast Move, just as much as you show them 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 winnings, I need you to I need you to show us when you take an L too. I need you to show us when you you down five ten grand. I need you to make a video like yeah, man. I came here with this, and I'm down 10 grand. I don't know if it does happen, but I've seen a lot of videos where you you taking the whole casino with you. I need to I need to know when the casino is taking you, all right? Just to be fair. Let me see. Um, hard to get a table anywhere, and the, the agents always have them on lock. <laughs> them jokers be on. Um, they be leasing tour buses going out there for the casinos, man. But, yeah, man. But, yeah. But um, let me see if you guys have any questions, because so hopefully when this light turns green, I'll be out of here. And then if you guys are on 80, y'all going to catch me 70 miles the whole way, because I'm trying to get this thing off my back. That way I could go to Texas and get back to warm weather. I haven't been to Texas since last year. Last year, produce season for like when it comes out of Mexico, I took I took a load from um, Mexico that went to um, – Pennsylvania, and I got stuck in Louisiana because they had that ice storm in Louisiana last year. That's the last time I went to Texas. Besides that, I haven't gone to Texas. Besides that, the, the furthest west I've been in my truck 
is um Grand Pra I think in Grand Prairie, um New um, Nebraska. That's the furthest west I've ever been. And the furthest east I've ever been in my truck is New Jersey. I haven't gone to New York, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, New Hampshire, Vermont. I haven't been anywhere up there with my trucks. So I pretty much stay between uh, for the most part, for the most part, like Indiana. Well, I go to Iowa every now and then. So I'll say Iowa and New Jersey. And I very rarely go to New Jersey. I very rarely go to PA. I, if I go west, if I go east, more than likely I'm in Ohio to Maryland in that region. I don't. I, I pretty much I stay within that area. But I decided to branch out a little bit more since the freight is shaky. Since the freight is shaky, I branch out a little bit more. But when the freight get back to normal and it normalizes, I'll be, I'll be back in my regular running area in no time. Let me see here. Um, William, that's true, especially at Sands Casino in Bethlehem, PA. They sit all day. I stand up and play on the table that I allow over the shoulder bet. Okay. Um, love Texas. We just moved back from Frisco, Texas. Yeah, I like Texas too. If I didn't, if I had to choose anywhere to live, um, I would live out in Texas, but it'd be East Texas. It wouldn't be West Texas. I don't, West Texas ain't for me, but I'll live out in East Texas. I live in South Carolina, Georgia, and I'll live in South Alabama. Um, I like all those areas over there. Mm, that's what's up, bro. I've been watching you for a minute. I enjoy your videos, bro. Keep them coming. Definitely um, trucking, trucking in life. Definitely. I appreciate that, man. I just we try to give people some inspiration on, you know, I came out here new. I'm still a rookie, but I learn very quick. I'm always paying attention. I always do be doing my research. I'm always trying to learn more. And trucking is trucking is hard. But at the same time, it's easy if you're willing to put in the work. If you're willing to put in the work, you shouldn't have much um, much issues. Like, I've learned so much about my truck. Like, my truck haven't been to my ma the mechanic mechanic. You know, the guy that that would, you, you trust taking, like, major components off your truck. My truck haven't been to that guy since um, July when I came back from vacation. That's the last time I went to that guy. Ever since then, I've been doing a lot of this work myself on my truck. Now, I went to the mechanic. They do, like, stuff on the wheels. You know, the nasty stuff that you got to mess with and you want to get dirty. But besides that, man, um, I'll be doing most of the work on my truck. And that's the reason for that is because I've came to trust myself more than trusting some of these mechanics. I got an example. The reason why I found out I had a flat, every once in a while when I go to the Loves, I get the free tire pass. So I go, I let them put the air in the tires and all of that stuff. And then that way they give me a little printout and tell me the thread. And then I know which tire. Okay, I got to change this tire and this tire and this tire, whatever the case is. I went there to have him put the air in the tire while I fill up. He did it. And then he didn't put none of the caps back on my tires. So that's how probably maybe, yeah, the valve was messed up, but I had a metal cap on there, which was preventing the air from coming out. He didn't put the caps back on none of the tires. So now I had I ended up having me a flat. So me letting somebody else do something on my truck, which, you know, was free, could have potentially cost me a whole tire because if I didn't check it and I ran 500 miles, I would have to replace the damn tire. So, you know, that's why I like to do things on my truck myself. Most of the time I do work on my truck myself. And I realized if you pre-trip your truck, you could catch a lot of things before it, um, it caused issues. And if you find a problem, if you try to find the cause of the problem early, you could, you could save, um, save a lot of money. So yeah. The key thing in trucking, especially when you're new, is trying to learn as much as you can and quickly as you can and be willing to bring pull out a wrench and do some of this work yourself because some of these shops, they don't know shit. Let me see. I had to crank my truck every three hours because longer than that, it almost didn't turn. Um, is that your, um, is that your, um, is it your batteries or is it your, um, your, uh, your starter? When is the last time you changed your battery, Be Smooth? I had to change my batteries. Last year's summer, and I, I did a video talking about that. I woke up smelling eggs. I, sm I was smelling raw eggs, like sulfur, and I didn't know it was the batteries. I thought the area where I was in just smelled bad. And I drove from North Carolina to South Carolina, and I still smelled the smell it. And I was like, nah, that can't be the area, because I just drove 50 miles. I still smell it. So I, I went under the truck, and then I could smell it. So I had to do a Google search to find out what thing, what on your truck could smell like sulfur. And when I did a Google search, truck, this Google search, it said um, it could be your 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 diesel or your batteries. And I figured it wasn't my diesel, so it had to be my batteries. And sure enough, it was my battery. So instead of changing just one battery, I changed all of them up because if one is bad, the rest of them are about to go bad, and I just didn't want to deal with it. So I just went ahead and changed all of them. Yeah, but um, that maybe maybe that's the issue or your starter because I know you just replaced the starter. 
I don't think the starter would have went bad that quick. You know, maybe it's your batteries. Woke up this morning, and my quarter fender was going, damn, man, that sucked, man. Where were, you, where were you at, man? Somebody hit you and you didn't realize it? That sucked, man. That's one of the reasons why I'm very particular where I park, you know. And if I park somewhere, if I go park somewhere, I'll try to park next to a truck. That way I only got to worry about one side overnight. You see what I'm saying? And then I would sit up front a little bit, play on my phone, and I'll wait for a guy to pull in before I go to the bunk. Because I know I'm going to leave early anyway, and I don't want to run the risk of somebody pulling in next to me and hitting my hitting my stuff. So if I pull into a spot, even though there may be a spot where there's a bunch of space, if there's a reefer guy there, I pull in right next to him. That way I don't got to worry about this one side. And Because I would hate to go to sleep and um, wake up, somebody that ripped off my um, the front end of my truck, you know? So, yeah. Um, you said ice snow. Oh, okay, it broke off. I didn't even know. Okay, okay. Yeah, see, that's why the wear and tear and the maintenance dealing with the snow sometimes is not even worth it. It's not even worth it. I know the money is right because, like I said, I seen Lowe's paint. It was, it was, they was posted at 18 going to Pennsylvania. It was like 500 miles. I was like, that ain't bad. You know, I could run that all day. You know, and I know I could get more for it because, but I just didn't want to deal with the snow. I said, nah, I take, I take um the more miles and go in the opposite direction because I know everybody's gonna be taking loads going that way. I said, let me go this way. And then um I've been eyeing loads going to Texas and they're paying pretty good. And I've been eyeing the loads from Texas going to Georgia, um and they're paying pretty good. So I'm trying to see if I can line them all up, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to make it. Um I'm probably just gonna have to take one load from maybe New Hampshire going closer to my house, maybe Tennessee or Kentucky or something like that. That way I could just go to my house and call it a, um call it a week. I don't take L's because I have so much money on file at the casino to back me up. Okay, okay. I'm always a little bit skeptical about people that don't say they take L's, man, because I do take L's. I ain't going to front. I do take some L's out here. It's, I do take some L's, but most of the time I don't take I don't take a lot of L's, and the L's that I take are not too expensive. But I do take some L's out here. But you saying you take no L's at a casino? Come on, bro. Come on, bro. But maybe you don't, man, because the videos you posted, you, you show me, you know, you show us that you're winning. Um, the plastic fender over the drives. Okay. Well, maybe you could pick up one, um, at a junkyard. Maybe it won't cost you too much if you, um, you pick one up at a junkyard. Like when I ripped off the bumper off my truck, that was an L. When I ripped the bumper off my truck, I just went ahead and replaced it with a metal one because I feel like it was going to last longer. It was going to look better and it was the same price. So if it's a fender, if it's a fender over your drives, if it's a, if you got a freight line and it's that that black piece that goes under, you know, you could pick one of those up cheap. But if it's like the whole quarter panel or whatever, you may have to spend a little bit more money for that, man. Because I know it comes in three pieces, at least on the freight line it does. So you may have to buy the whole piece or try to find a junkyard to just sell you one, and it may not be the same color. Yeah, it may not be the same color. Okay, so it's the one that go over the tire there. That one, that one be cheap. Yeah, that shouldn't be too expensive. Yeah, that shouldn't be too expensive. So. Okay, so Beast Smooth said he used to take L's back in the day, huh? Okay, so you, be, you became a professional, so you don't take no more L's at the casinos. He said he take L's, maybe not at the casino, but he get them. Yeah, everybody take L's out here, man. Every now and then, you, you're going to get an L. An L's going L's gonna to show up when, when you least expect it or you least wanted to, you know. I take L's. Like, for example, I was trying to go to Texas early in the week, right? So I posted the truck, and what I do, I will post the truck, post like three cities close to where I where I am and then I also what um what I also do is um I will take down the posting put up the posting take down the posting put up the posting to keep it fresh and somebody called me on a low paying you know paying decent going to um Houston Texas and I was I just I wanted seventy five dollars more I wanted seventy five so I would not budge I was like can you do seventy five dollars more he was like nah I can't do it I was like, man, well, you, I was like, you could do it, man. You could do the $75. He's like, I can't do the $75. This is all I got in a load. So I actually told him that, like, I wasn't interested. And then he took my information. He said, if anything, he'll call me back. And he never called me back. And then when I looked back at it, I was like, man, I should have took that load. But, you know, it is what it is. You can't get them all, right? But I'm going to go ahead and uh, end this video. I got my, um, they just told me this load is done, and I need to pick up this load. So I can hit the run, hit the road, and make what I want to make this week. But um, again, it's your boy 